very prestigious tournament, uh, one that as you play two games uh, at home, you the next uh, round will take place in uh, I think New Jersey at the Barclays and, and Akron is, is that team we open up with. Uh, uh, very, very good basketball team. But before we get started with that, uh, obviously you guys got the, uh, <clears throat> the bulletin about uh, Beard, Anton Beard being reinstated. And uh, <clears throat> and obviously it's it's something that's, that's been playing heavy on my heart uh, because number one, as I talk to the parents, uh, talk about taking a young boy and sending him back a man, and, and that's a process. So as a coach, uh, you have to pull off your hat to, you're trying to do the, what's going to be in the best interest of any kids. And you know, like all kids, they're going to make mistakes. And, and, and I guess I'm one of these guys that, you know, I, I made a vow to those parents that <clears throat> they have them along with it. It's a process. And as they make, make mistakes, we're going to hold them accountable. Uh, in this particular case, uh, now that you know, there, there's some things that have been resolved, uh, hopefully we can move forward. But, uh, but I'll say it again, you know, we're, we're teachers, we're educators, and uh, I don't take this matter lightly. That's one thing about my program. We're going to do it the right way on and off the floor. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a second chance too. Uh, let's see how this is going to shape this young man's life. And I think uh, he's a guy that I think will learn from it, uh, learn a life lesson. Not only Anton will learn a life lesson, but I think you know so, some of our other student athletes uh, uh, as well. And we'll and we'll move forward with that. Uh, and in terms of uh, Dustin Thomas, uh, he still has. Uh, there's still legal matters that are taking place with him uh, because the question would probably be, you know, uh, uh, Anton being eligible and, and what, what about Dustin? Uh, but uh, the thing about that is that each guy, you know, has legal representation. And uh, so th that, that is separate in itself. Uh, and so as of the day, there's still uh, that bit of, uh, with Dustin, he still has a legal process that's taking place. It's not resolved yet, uh, but he's still in school. Uh, Dustin Thomas is still in school uh, in terms of uh, <clears throat> Anton. Let's like say he'll be reinstated today and he'll practice with the team, be suspended. Uh, and that was a collaboration of uh, uh, Jeff Long and myself, uh, be suspended for the first semester, which is, I think, nine games. Uh, but he's already had some things placed on him in terms of Anton. And now he has even more things that are placed on him, which will be resolved, I think, uh, will be kind of in-house, in-house some things we're doing to him that he's got to adhere to. Uh, so it's not like he just all of a sudden back on the team. Uh, it, like I said, a lot of thought, uh, a lot of work uh, on his part. And to his credit, he's done all the things I put before him uh, up until this point. Uh, but let's talk about the ball game. We got a team coming in here that's really, really good. Akron returns four starters from a team that won 21 games. Uh, uh, Coach Dam Dambert, he does a tremendous job. I've, I've always admired watching his teams from afar. Uh, he's got, uh, I think, three guys that are 6'10", 6'9", 6'10", 6'11". Three guys in that department. They have some wing guys that are 6'6", 6 6'7", 6 can really shoot the basketball. And their big guys are really skilled. Uh, it's a team that has a lot of depth. Ten Letterman's returning. And of course, the, the Jackson kid is the guy that runs the show for them. A little point guard, quick handles, can shoot the basketball. So it's, uh, it's going to be a, a heck of a ball game. I think it's a big time challenge for our basketball team, especially you know, with the inexperience that we have. So it's possibly be, could be their experience versus our inexperience. And, uh, but it should be a great, great ball game as we get ready to start in the preseason NIT. Mike, I'm sure you stayed in touch with Anton. How's he doing? Where would you say his mindset is? Just how's, how's he handled all this? He's been good. He's been good. Like I said, he's been doing all the things that we placed on him even up until this point, uh, even though he was suspended. There are some things in place that he had to adhere to even to get to this point. So uh, uh, so uh, uh, he, he's doing okay. You said there were some things that he had to adhere to. Are you talking about well, There's academically, class, class, you name it. There are some in-house things that we already had in place, and there will be some, be some more things that that are placed upon him uh, you know, for the semester. I mean, we're talking about he's still got a whole lot of semester. So, I'm 
sure he's been working out on his own, but he hadn't been around practice with you guys or worked out with you guys in several months. Where do you think his game's at? How long will it take him to get up to speed? We'll see today, Bob. Yeah, they'll start practicing today. We'll see. You mentioned that it was a collaboration with you and Jeff to come up with that uh, first semester suspension. Was there any talk among you guys for just making it for the entire year or a different time frame? Well, I, I think we came to a conclusion. And I think that's the conclusion we came up with. You said been weighing on you heavily, which is you know, really understandable. Um, and I, I know he's not out of the woods yet, but just how good is it to have to reach this step where he can you know start practicing and if he keeps doing what he's supposed to do, can, can play in a few weeks? Well, Bob, I'm about relationships and communication. And this kid, you know, I always say my players are like my own son. And so this is one of my son, you know, that uh, – uh, I mean, he, he made a mistake, and and obviously there's a lot of judgment that's going on, saying this and saying this about the kid. I know what kind of kid he is, and so uh, from that standpoint, I, I, those are some of the things that uh, that I, that I wrestle with. But uh, but at the end of the day, uh, I think he's going to be a better person because of it. I, I think it's life lesson, and that's to me what it's all about. That's what the education process is all about. Bob will get to play in these first eight games. What do you think he can add in practice? Do you think that's something that can help your team? Well, it gives us a uh, – yeah, I'm sure, you know, with him not having an opportunity to uh, to even be with our team since mid-July. I mean, when you think about what is taking place, he, you know, the, all those things transpired around in, in mid-July, and he hadn't been, uh, been with our team since then. So uh, for him to get back with the team, I'm sure that's big with him. Uh, what he adds to it, I, you know, got it played last year, and, and obviously gives us another body. Is that something you talk to the players about when you really say to them, or just how do they react? Yeah, I talked to them, and it was just like a matter of fact to them. It was just like, okay, coach. Uh, I think they were they were happy for him. That's uh, their family. We are family. Yeah, that's I can't say it enough. You know, our, our kids. I mean, it's like a band of brothers, and one of the brothers was, was not with them. And uh, there was nothing they could do. It, it was just a matter of uh, time, getting the legal process, let it legal process take take its course. Uh, the university policy takes its course, and um, they will move forward. How excited do you think Anton is to be able to practice again? Just be back with you guys. I'm sure he, he's looking forward to it. As far as Akron goes, you know, you look like they've won 10 straight 20 win seasons. They're probably SEC folks might not know that much. I mean, you know, but I mean, fans in general might not oh. know that much about it. They seem like a pretty quality program. Well, they're, they're picked to win their league, number one, or finish, finish high in their league. Uh, probably NCAA uh, team as well. Uh, they have some seniors. Forsyth, he's one of the uh, top players in in their league. Uh, uh, this team, again, they got size. They got guys who can step out and, and uh, uh, Chatham, Chatham, he can really step out and shoot the basketball. Very versatile big guy. So when you're talking about a guy, a team that has size, Isaiah Jackson, a big wide body. I mean, he just looked t he's a load in the paint. Uh, they want to play mid-tempo. They'll play up-tempo, which is well. But the thing they can do, they can play inside out. I mean, they can. They got an inside game, and if you uh, try to double up on them, I mean, you got to find those shooters because they got uh, three perimeter guys that can really knock down shots. Looking at their stats through the years, seems like their coach likes to play a lot of guys. Is it going to be tough for you to wear them down the way you, you often wear teams down just because they play a lot of guys? Well, that, that that's going to remains to be the uh, the question mark because uh, you know one of the strength of our team has always been our bench, and you know uh, not not necessarily having the uh, a lack of uh, the depth on our bench, and whereas they have the depth. Uh, uh, that's to their advantage in, in this particular game. But, uh, uh, but we won't change, you know, kind of what we do. We'll, we'll mix and match and just try to uh, create some havoc with our defense, uh, not to maybe uh, just mixing it up. How do you feel about, you know, you play one game, and, and how do you feel like you guys play? How do you feel about your team going in? Uh, coming out, you know, the first game, I, I thought, you know, there was some nervousness that was taking place. Um, then we saw a guy like Moses really uh, impose his will on that game. He had a size advantage, and uh, he started off knocking down a couple of high post shots. And before you know it, our guys did a good job of, of really attacking the basket and, and, and giving him some easy opportunities. He was running the floor. Uh, so he was scoring in a, a variety of ways. Got to the free throw line, some offensive rebounds. Uh, defensively, I, I feel we've got to be a whole lot better. Uh, we allowed too much 
dribble penetration, especially in that second half. I mean, to hold that team to, uh, I think the score was 40 to 25 at halftime. That was, uh, I thought that was pretty good for not shooting the ball uh, the way we we're capable of shooting it. But in the second half, I thought it was kind of like we just kind of, uh, just kind of who's going to outlast who in the, in the game. And our defense was not uh, on point. So uh, we've got to do a better job of that. And taking care of the basketball. You know, Jabril, although he had 10 assists, he had six turnovers. And I thought a lot of those turnovers were just careless with the basketball. And we left points on the floor with the free throw line. We missed, I think we shoot, shot like 53% from the free throw line. And you got guys up there that should be knocking free throws down. Uh, and then you do that in that game, you're scoring almost 90, 95 points, 96 points. So there's some things that we've got. For the first game, uh, I just give it an okay rating. Uh, I think we've got to play better, especially uh, with uh, Akron coming in here and the teams that we're going to get ready to face. With, uh, with their, their big guys in Forsyth, I think his name is 6'11". How do you see the match between him and Moses? Well, it's, it's you know, uh, one of the things we can't afford to is get into foul trouble. And they're, they're, he's a big guy that can uh, – he's pretty skilled on, on the block. Uh, so he's got – Moses is going to have to have some help. Uh, we're going to have to dig in there and – uh, scratch and claw, just kind of uh, make them uncomfortable in, in what they do. It's not going to be one guy stopping the guy. I'm going to tell you that it's going to be our whole team collectively because we're going to have to, if we're going to give him help inside, uh, that's going to leave people open on the perimeter. And we've got to be on point in finding those guys that can really shoot the basketball. With their guards, it's pretty experienced. It might be hard to rattle them. The way, you know, sometimes, sometimes conference teams come in here and you can really rattle their guards. He's, these guys don't sound like they're really good. They're, they're really good, Bob. It's an ex again, I, I caution our fans. It, it's a very experienced team. Uh, he does does a great, great job with them, and uh, I'm sure they'll be ready to play. I think they play another game tonight uh, after playing Cleveland State maybe two nights ago. I beat Cleveland State, and Cleveland State got at them a little bit, uh, so they're used to teams pressing up on them. Uh, but we've got to, have to play. Good basketball. We're going to have to continue to share the basketball. I, I love it that we're still sharing the basketball. We had 21 assists, I think, the other night. Uh, I love that part of it. We're rebounding the basketball. Uh, but we've got to do a better job of protecting the hole and, and not allowing people to get into the all the way to the basket and, and getting you know some guys in foul trouble. We had two guys to foul out in that game the other night. Uh, and that, that can't take place because we don't have – you only have nine guys, I think. Nine, ten guys. You know, as a MAC team, how, how fired up do you think they'll be to come in here and play an SEC team? Obviously, if, if they were to knock off an SEC team, that's going to get them a lot of. I think any team that comes in here this this year, especially with what we lost, I think any team that comes here, they're going to be fired up. Trust me, they will be fired up. Uh, they want to come and steal one. So uh, we've got to somehow uh, match their intensity, their energy, and uh, and hopefully, you know, play good basketball. Is Anton, is he going to be, like, be able to sit on the bench and stuff before he can, like, the He's team? on the team, yeah. He's, I mean, he's back on the team. So he'll, he'll be on the bench and street clothes. He's back on the team, Bob, yes. We all know that he will, you know, as of right now, you know, uh, he won't be playing, you know, for the first semester. We already know that. Now, there are some things he's got to do in order to get to that point. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. And, and like I said, to his credit, He's done all the things that he's supposed to do, and uh, and and uh, but we got a lot of time between now and then. But he will be sitting there with his team. I'm sure, that whole situation is pretty trying on all of you, and I know Dustin's is still got to be resolved. But is there some relief on your part to, to kind of start to see this, you know, being able to put it behind you some? Say it again. Is there some relief on on your part to see this, you know, begin to? that you're finally starting to be able to put this behind you, son? Well, I, I think that's a valid point. You know, you know, I always said, you know, we, we start off this season with a lot of question marks, and that was one of the question marks, you know, what was going to take place. And to our team's credit, they stayed dialed in and focused and, and moved forward. Like, you know, uh, they weren't going to be here. And uh, so now to get, you know, some of those pieces added on, uh, I'm sure for our guys, I'm sure they're uh, – uh, they're happy. They're probably looking forward to it, uh, especially in practice, because we're down to maybe uh, one sub or no subs in practice. So it gives you some more bodies in practice to to continue to prepare and, and get better. What about as you as coaches? Is there some relief on, on your part too? Well, I, uh, mine's is more so for the kid. I, you know, I'm just uh, you know because when when they sign up with you, obviously you want to do what's best for them, and. Uh, 
So now they get a chance to come back and do what they came here to do, and that is to, uh, to be a student athlete. You know, at the end of the day, uh, as a coach, you want these guys when they leave here to be productive citizens. And you know, the education process continues. It continues throughout. And, uh, and I think this is going to be a, not only an education process, but it's a life lesson as well. So for for the kids, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for them. And uh, and it gives us another guy that we brought in here to come and do what he was brought in here to do. A few more questions, guys. Mike, I know you were pretty, I think you were pretty good friends with Gary Pinko. Maybe you still are. Yes. I uh, just wondering what your reaction was to the news that he's going to step down at the end of the year. Oh, I was, I was really, uh, you know, that's... Uh, Gary and I became really, really good friends and still remain great friends. Uh, uh, when I got to Missouri, obviously, he's one of those guys that kind of wrapped his arms around me and said, hey, let me, let me show you what takes place here. And uh, we became good friends, supported each other and in, in, in what we did. And to, to hear that, uh, that was uh, it. Uh, I mean, it was, it was shocking news is what it was. Uh, but at the same time, I, I know what kind of person Gary is, and uh, and uh, we kind of reached out, I text uh, and reached out to him, and uh, and he was good. He said, "I'm good, Mike." And uh, but to to hear that, you know, especially with what he's done in Missouri. I mean, he's a giant of a uh, not only a, a giant of a coach, but he's a giant, a caring person. And we saw that all the way up until uh, all the things that took place on that campus last weekend. I mean, he's. Uh, uh, he's done a lot for not only that university, but I think for the state of Missouri, and uh, and he always will be a dear friend of mine. Uh, we also have named captains this year, and the two captains uh, thus far, are, uh, you know, so you know, our, our team did it as well as the coach. I was one of those guys that kind of chimed in on it, but those guys are going to be uh, Moses Kinsley and uh, Manuel Watkins. Uh, those are going to be your captains. Uh, for this year, and uh, as of right now, that's something I told them. There's something that's earned is not given. It's earned, and we'll see if they continue to to be in those positions. Uh, I think they will represent, you know, our team and uh, in a, in a great fashion. And you guys get a chance to talk to them. Uh, I think uh, later on, right? You get a chance to talk to those guys as well.